Yes, hello viewers. Uh, welcome back to today's episode. Uh, today we talk about peptic ulcer disease. So you realize that this is a very common disease. Almost everyone in their lifetime will develop peptic ulcer disease. That is according to various statistics. So today we want to see uh, what is this disease, uh, what causes it. Um, we want to know uh, what are those signs that will tell us the disease has set in, uh, and what are those red flags that will tell you that you need urgent, you know, urgent visitation to your doctor? And then uh, we shall also see how, you know, how to heal faster. You realize that most people think it's chronic. Actually, this disease is not supposed to be chronic. It's supposed to be curable. However, we want to see uh, how best can we make sure we heal completely from peptic ulcers. So that is the aim of today, today's topic. So uh, starting with, uh, first of all, what is this disease? Uh, peptic ulcer disease is a medical condition, you know, characterized by discontinuity in the inner lining of the gastrointestinal system, which goes deep enough to the muscularis mucosa. You realize that this GI, um, the wall of the tract has various layers. So um, just a shallow, you know, a shallow discontinuity will give us an erosion, you know. These erosions which heal very easily. So by the time we call it an outside, it's when it has extended deep to reach the gastrointestinal mucosa, the muscularis mucosa, sorry. So you realize that um, this is basically caused by the body digesting itself. You realize that in the stomach, uh, that's where we have our protein foods getting digested. Our stomach will release acid, gastric acid, to release pepsin, uh, which will help us digest. Uh, however, how comes that at one point we have these enzymes digesting the mucosa? That's what we want to understand today. So just to make us understand that what exactly happens, realize that um, the stomach has mechanisms on how to protect itself. It has the mucus layer, you know running all along the lining to protect it from this acid, you know, acid is so corrosive, and protect it from pepsin, which digests proteins, and the wall of the intestine is a protein. So the mucus is there to protect. So the stomach also, secondly, the stomach releases bicarbonate. You realize bicarbonates uh, help us to neutralize the acid, you know. So you, you, you realize that uh, in that way, the body is able to defend itself. In case of excess acid bicarbonates come, come in. Then the other third thing that the body has done to protect itself, it has various microvasculature, very small blood vessels that run beneath, uh, which help to deliver nutrients that help us in easy repair, you know, of the mucosa in case of any damage, any erosions. So we are wondering in peptic ulcers, what exactly is happening? So for us to know what happens, uh, let's first write to the causes of peptic ulcer disease. So it has been found out that the commonest causes are two. First and the commonest is a bacteria called H. pylori. So this bacteria, just like it's reflected up here, it's, uh, we get it via, you know, fecal oral fecal oral root so here we get it from dirty you know dirty food dirty things you know and it's been found out that most people get this bacteria early in childhood it just remains latent up to a particular stage when when it starts you know bringing up these effects so that is the commonest cause so this h pylori then the second mo most common cause is NSAIDs very many of us are using NSAIDs are excessively using NSAIDs these drugs are dangerous to our mucosa. So NSAIDs, I mean, they include, uh, we have diclofenac, we have drugs like ibuprofen, we have drugs like um, nephenamic acid, commonly used in, using, during, during menstrual cramps. So realize that these drugs are so common uh, over the counter, we can easily access them. However, they have some other effects, just like I will explain, you know, going forward. Then the other, the, those are the most common causes, H. pylori and the NSAID drugs, ibuprofen, diclofenac, mephenamic acid, aspirin. So the other causes are very less likely. However, they can equally be causes in some people who, you know, don't have these two. So our malignancy, sometimes our stomach gets some cancers that can <clears throat> cause excessive release. We have gastrinomas, you know, 
Zolinga-Wilson syndrome, where you know you'll have excessive production. Then other drugs like corticosteroids, you know, hydrocortisone. We are abusing corticosteroids here and there. However, they are also uh, have also been found out to cause, you know, dyspeptic ulcer disease. So various, various causes. But however, the very first two are the most common and avoidable causes. So what happens? H. pylori, for it, it will, um, first of all, as a bacteria, it can release cytotoxins. It releases mucolytic enzymes. So mucolytic, I mean, they'll go and, you know, cut down the mucus membrane that is, you know, surrounding the, mu the gastric mucosa. So when it breaks down the mucus, it releases the mucus. Our membrane, will rem our lining will remain very exposed, you know, to, to, to acid, to pepsin that will, you know, eat it up. So uh, that is one. Then um, it also uses various, you know, it, it, you remember that mucus production is regulated by various things. We have hormones that regulate this mucus, this, this uh, mucus production and acid production. So some of the hormones that regulate acid production are interfered with, you know, by this, by this hormone, by this uh, bacteria. Hormones like gastrin, which increase release. So realize that for the bacteria, it will go and interfere with hormone somatostatin. We have a hormone called somatostatin, which helps to stop production of gastrin. Now when the, this H. pylori interferes with the somatostatin, realize that um, the gastrin will be in plenty so there is hypersecretion of the acid that will, you know, counter. You realize that if acid is more than the mucus can handle, we can still have mucosal damage. For the NSAIDs, uh, NSAIDs, um, for them, they work. Usually we use them to reduce pain, right? And for them to reduce pain, they have to work on something called prostaglandins produced in the body. You realize that they have to inhibit Production of the prostaglandins, which prostaglandins are responsible for pain. Not forgetting that the same prostaglandins are responsible for encouraging mucus production, encouraging uh, mucosal blood flow, you know, encouraging uh, bicarbonate release. So that means as we are stopping the pain, this side, we are stopping mucus production, we are stopping bicarbonate production, we are reducing mucosal blood flow. So that's how our mucosa gets, our lining of the gastrointestinal tract gets exposed uh, to this acid, to the enzyme pepsin, which digests this up and we end up with these what? These ulcers. So those are the causes. Uh, I'll move forward to the sites these ulcers commonly you know, affect. So they don't affect the entire tract. They commonly affect uh, the stomach, the stomach lining, and then the upper part of the of the small gut. That's why they affect. So we have gastric and duodenal ulcers and different people get different. Someone may just have one the gastric ulcers, the other may have duodenal ulcers, the other may have both. And they both present differently, just like we're going to see. Uh, so how do you know that peptic ulcers have set in and so you need to do something about it? So the common sign is epigastric pain. So pain at this upper part, just below the chest, you know, Central, central, this central region just below the chest is a common site of pain. So if you experience that kind of pain, there are high chances that uh, ulcers have set in, peptic ulcers have set in. However, this pain may mm, differs, you know, for for various people. We realize there are some people who will experience this pain mostly in the night, or. Uh, two to three hours after a meal. So if you experience that kind of pain, it's worse two to three hours after a meal and worse at night. However, when you take food, you know, it disappears. It's relieved by food. There are chances that you have duodenal ulcers. So you need to visit your doctor. They will be able to understand this and manage you better. Then there are also those ulcers where when you take a meal, it worsens. Those are gastric ulcers. So that is characteristic of gastric ulcers. And your doctor knows all these things and he knows how to handle them. The other thing that can tell you, sometimes you may not get pain, you may get pain accompanied by bloating. You know, you feel full. Eh? 
even after eating very little food. You may have um, nausea, you know, that feeling of vomiting. You may even vomit. You know, those things uh, show us that, you know, the, the, the lining of the, your tract is swollen. Is We call it edematous. So that's what is causing the fullness. Uh, that's what is causing the vomiting and nausea. So all those things will indicate to you that it's a possible peptic ulcers. So the other thing you can find in case, uh, in case of these um, peptic ulcers, uh, just something I forgot. Usually this pain, you find it, you know, like a splash of hot water in your stomach. It's usually a burning pain. So that's what will be characteristic of these ulcers. That's when you know that ulcers have actually done what? Set in. So basically pain, bloating, nausea, vomiting are the common tell signs for you to see the doctor. Make sure you see your doctor. So now going forward, um, so you realize that untreated ulcers are very dangerous. Untreated ulcers can end up bleeding. You know, they can bleed just like a wound that would be on top of your skin, how it would bleed, you know. It's the same way the, in, the ones on the inner lining of the stomach can bleed. So this shows the significance of treating it as early as possible. So they can bleed. And how do you know that they are bleeding? If you start passing dark stool, you know, dark stool, or vomiting blood, or vomiting, you know, coffee brown substances, it's a tell sign that you possibly have ulcers that are bleeding. Actually, that is a red flag for you to immediately and urgently visit your doctor. The other thing is these ulcers, if left untreated, they can just eat up. You remember acid keeps eating and eating the mucosa. So it can perforate it to get a hole within that tract. Remember, this is like a cylindrical tract. So if I treated, we can get a hole and that's when our food contents start escaping to you know the free space in the abdomen. And this can give us terrible infections, peritonitis, which is very dangerous and very little. So all ulcers should be treated on time. And the other thing we are worried about is, we talked about H. pylori, the bacteria. This same bacteria is carcinogenic. What do I mean? Carcinogenic, it can cause cancer. So that's why you'll find that most people suffering from cancer of the stomach previously had untreated ulcers. So you realize that is the importance of having it treated and fully treated to recovery. We want to prevent these cancers. Some cancers are very avoidable. So what else are we avoided? Usually it's hard to leave uh, uh, ulcers untreated and you think maybe they will resolve spontaneously. Usually they recur, you know, they keep recurring if left untreated. So we want to treat them once and, you know, live a healthy life thereafter. Sometimes even um, just like a wound would heal and form a scar on your, on your hand. These ulcers can give us scars, you know, causing obstruction, reducing the, you know, the size of some outlets. So that shows us the magnitude of why these ulcers should be treated as early as possible. So having discussed that, I want uh, us to go forward to what can we do, you know, to... When you go visit your house, your, 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 you realize that these ulcers are, are treatable, you know, they are curable, provided your doctor is able to find out the re reason, you know, the right cause of your ulcers and stop that cause so they are treatable. So uh, it's usually when you come to the doctor, we want to eradicate the bacteria, the H. pylori bacteria that is causing us this problem. We also want to, if it's because of the NSAIDs, the drugs, we want to stop them, you know, and treat that wound to healing. So that is our aim. What can make ulcers chronic? One, if you don't follow the doctor's instruction. If you don't complete the dose, realize that this dose usually takes 14 days, that is two weeks. If you take less and then you feel relief and stop, that's how we shall have chronic ulcers. Then if... Uh, Excessive NSAID use, you know, if you know your ulcers are most, if your doctor has told you ulcers are because of these NSAID drugs, kindly stop them. Usually NSAIDs, ibuprofen, diclofenac and various drugs used, we can also advise that you change to another non-NSAID non drugs. For example, paracetamol. 
paracetamol is also equally you know it can equally heal pain and you know it cannot uh, it's not an NSAID to predispose you to these ulcers or you can reduce the dose you know those are two options you can make uh, to make sure that we avoid the, the, the what the ulcers then the other thing is um, alcohol and smoking have been found out to increase you know acid secretion in the stomach which acid is too much compared to the defense mechanism we had so if possible cut down on alcohol intake cut down on smoking once you're discovered to have uh, this particular condition yes so uh you realize uh, basically that's what we can do to to treat these ulcers however even as a person you have to cooperate provided you take your medication full dose for the 14 days or the duration you've been told to completion then you keep away from the NSAIDs uh, the smoking you keep away from the smoking um, you keep away from the alcohol intake we can fully fully prevent ulcers and any complications that come with them so basically that's what I wanted to explain about peptic ulcers uh, I don't know if you have any question you can type it in the chat below. I shall be answering along the way this discussion continues. Um, and then we can see how to move forward. So ulcers are curable. It's not a chronic disease. Ulcers are curable. Provided you meet the right doctor who will help you recognize the cause and you follow instructions. Yes. Basically, that's what I want to share. I wanted to share. Uh, thank you so much uh, for keeping on up to this point i encourage you to subscribe to the channel like this video share with your friends who need this information and in that way we can you know we want quality health for everyone so thank you so much that's all i had to share